If you have your Bibles, turn with me back to Deuteronomy, the first chapter. As we continue this morning in, uh, in our series on jams in June and July, our track three, we're on our third song. This morning we want to look at the iconic What's Going On by Marvin Gaye. <laughs> what's going on. And I want, uh, Reverend Flake has read for us Deuteronomy 1, 19 through 33. I just want to focus there on that 31st verse, which simply says, in Deuteronomy 1 in that 31st verse, and in the wilderness, there you saw how the Lord your God carried you as a father carries his son all the way you went until you reached this place. Grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of our God shall stand forever. What's, what's going on? Uh, what's going on? The album was the 11th studio album by the late great songer, songwriter, producer Marvin Gaye. The album was released on May 21st, 1971 by Motown Records. The narrative that was established by the songs on the album speak from a point of a person in a time dealing with the Vietnam War, many soldiers returning home, having to witness hatred, suffering, and injustice. The first single on the album was a song with the same name, What's Going On. Gay had been inspired by the social ills that he had seen in the United States, and he cited the 1965 Watts riots as a turning point in his life. The song was released on January 17, 1971. Motown sent 100,000 copies of the song to radio stations across the land. The initial success of this led to a further 100,000 selling over 200,000 copies in one week. The song eventually sold more than 2 million copies, becoming the fastest selling Motown single at that time. These are the words that Marvin Gaye spoke in What's Going On. Mother, mother, there's too many of you crying. Brother, 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 there's far too many of you dying. You know, we've got to find a way to bring some leaven here today. Father, father, we don't need to escalate. You see, war is not the answer. For only love can conquer hate. You know, we've got to find a way to bring some leaven here today. He said, picket lines and picket signs. Don't punish me with brutality. Talk to me so you can see, oh, what's going on, what's going on, what's going on. That's really, in a real sense, what Moses is saying in Deuteronomy 1. He is summarizing, he's reflecting on where God has brought the people of Israel. He tells them, he says, listen, God brought us out of Egypt. God uh, allowed us to cross the Red Sea. God was with us. God has been there for us. I finally told you that it was time for us to say it's time for us to go and take the land that God had promised us. 
God had told Abraham that I'm going to give you a land flowing with milk and honey. Moses says, listen, I, I told you all, it's now time for us to take what is ours. You all said, listen, we need to send some spies in the land. And so I chose a, a 12 men, one from each of the 12 tribes of Israel. And they went and they spied the land. And, and when they came back, they said, 10 said, no, we can't do this. We, 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 there, there are giants in the land and we'll never be able to conquer the land. With Yeah, it's just like God said it was going to be. It is a land flowing with milk and honey. There's some stuff over there we have never even seen before. But the giants are too great. And there were only two, Joshua and Caleb, who said, in spite of the giants, if we just trust and believe in God, we can overcome what lies ahead of us. Moses says in that 30th verse, he says, the Lord your God who is going before you, he, he will fight for you as he did for you in Egypt before your very eyes and in the wilderness. And look what he says. He says, there you saw how the Lord your God carried you as a father carried his son all the way you went until you... He's saying, God has been a father to you. He has given you everything that you need. He has been there with you in the morning, in the evening, when you went down, when you woke up. God has been there for you. Like a father is supposed to be. And don't you hear Moses saying, what's going on? I don't understand it. He... He has shown you time. I mean, when, when, when Pharaoh was at your back and the Red Sea was in front of you, he was with you. What's going on? When you needed water at Mara because the waters were bitter, he provided you sweet water to drink. What's going on? Every time when you needed food, he gave you manna from on a high. What? What, 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 what's going on? Why is it that in spite of all that God has done for you, you doubt him anyways? And brothers and sisters, like, like Marvin Gaye and like Moses, when we think about fatherhood today, one can't help but respond, what's going on? When, when you look at the statistics and you look at all that's going on, you can't help but say, what's going on? Where, where, where God, fatherhood is one of the greatest gifts God has ever given us, and yet so many. What's going on? Too many children in our community are being raised. I, I don't understand how you can live in the same city. I wish I had a witness here. As your child and you can't even care enough to be a father. What's, what's going on? And so I believe, I believe, I believe like Moses that, that we know that if we would just do our part, that's all Moses is saying. If you would just do your part, God will do it. God has shown you that he is like a father who carried. That means he said he has carried you to this very moment. That means every step of your journey. And I just, I just wanted to encourage some father today. That if you just do your part, God has promised you that he will lead you and guide you and be there with you all the way to the very end. And so there are five things, five things that I think will help fathers on this Father's Day. 
five things that will help us uh, become the fathers that God is really looking to elevate and bless just like he was trying to do Israel. The first thing fathers, if we're going to be the fathers that God is looking for, the first thing is manhood must be exhibited. I see a news going to get quiet right there. <laughs> we, 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 don't, we don't like to talk about that because that's, 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 no, no, that's the word. Because 1 Corinthians 16th chapter, 13th and 14th verse, uh, reading from the, uh, uh, the ESV version says this. Be watchful, stand firm in the faith, act like men, be strong. See, I knew y'all wasn't going to say amen right there. <laughs> what that's supposed to mean. It means exactly what it says. Be watchful, stand firm in the faith, act like men, and be strong. Listen, it is important for fathers to understand that you have to exhibit that, that your children, your sons, and your daughters need to see what it means to be a man. And, and, and see, we focus on boys that it's important for boys to see, but you know it's important for your girls to see what a, a real man is also? I wish I had somebody here because the truth is uh, sooner or later, your daughter, I wish I had somebody here who knows, uh, men have a responsibility to exhibit, to show your daughter what a real man is in the home, uh, what a problem is, is we have allowed the world to define for us what manhood is instead of allowing the word of God to define for us what manhood is. And so what we have now, instead of biblical manhood, we have this toxic masculinity that says, you know, I, I can... Uh, Lay around all day long. I wish I had somebody here. Play video games. Don't go to work. Don't do this. And because I'm a man, you got to. Have you lost your mind? No, biblical manhood. You want to know what it means to be a man? All you have to do is go to the word of God. Because the word of God says, husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church. That's manhood. It says, fathers, don't provoke your children. That's manhood. It says, take care of your responsibilities. That's what manhood is all about. Manhood ain't about how many babies you can make. I wish I had somebody here. But manhood ain't about you raising your voice. And because I've learned if you just be a real man, you ain't got to raise your voice. Hmm. Be watchful. Stand firm in the faith. Act like men. Be strong. And when they see you being a man, when that boy sees you being a man, when he grows up, he, he wants to be a man just like, what? I wish I had somebody here. He wants to be the type of man that his father was. When, when that girl grows up and she starts dating and looking for somebody, listen, she has a hard time because uh, she saw what a real man is uh, in her house. She doesn't get fooled by this fake man who. She doesn't get fooled by uh, what looks like a man. No, because you showed them what a real man was. Manhood must be exhibited. But number two, number two, if we're going to be the fathers that God has called us to be, manhood has to be exhibited. But number two, you've got to make time for your family. Deuteronomy 6, 6 and 7 says, And these words which I command thee, thee this day shall be in thy heart, and thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children. 
and shall talk of them when thou sittest in thy house and when thou walkest by the way and when thou liest down and when thou risest up. Listen, he, he says in Deuteronomy, he says, if you want your children to know the word and know what's right, you got to spend what? Some time with them. He says, and these words which I command thee this day shall be. Now, first of all, and I, can I just throw this in parenthetically? It's got to be in your heart first. <laughs> See, now, a whole lot of us grew up on, you know, don't do as I do, do what I say. But that really ain't biblical. <laughs> Amen. Now, I'm not telling you to go call your mom and say, Pastor said that wasn't in the word. <laughs> I'm just telling you what the Bible says. The Bible says, and these words which I command this day, he says, first of all, they shall be in thine heart. They, they got to be in your heart first. And then when they are in your heart, he says, and thou shalt teach them diligently. Listen, if you're going to teach something diligently unto thy children, you've got to have it in your heart, but you've also got to spend some time with them, teaching them and showing them not only what the word says, but we've got to be not only hearers of the word, but the word says what? Be doers. be doers of the word. He says, be in thy heart, you shall teach them diligently unto thy children and shall talk. He says, you... You talk of them when thou sittest in thy house, when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when that you got to, I, I thank God, I thank God for my grandfather, my, my late grandfather, who was my father figure growing up. He would come and pick me up on Saturday mornings from my uh, football games or baseball games. We would go to the barber shop every Saturday, same thing. We'd go to the barbershop, leave the barbershop, go get something to eat, and we'd go home, and we'd watch baseball or watch something, and, and he would, I, I, could, I, I mean, I could, I could see it clearly as day. Now, now, he wasn't a perfect man. He made mistakes. He messed up, but I thank God for the time that he spent with me because it helped me become, I wish I had somebody here who's grateful that you had a father who spent time with you. You had a father figure who spent time with you and taught you what's right. And you didn't always make the right decisions. You didn't always do the right thing, but thank God you had somebody who cared. Men we got to care enough to spend time with our children. I, yesterday, I, we, my son had a seven-on-seven -seven tournament in Penn State University. They played, I think, 12 games. We didn't leave uh, State College last night until about 8 or 9 o'clock. And as I was coming back, I was thinking, you know, I really didn't have to go to this, but I thought about what this is going to mean to him. I wish I had somebody here Amen. later on in life. And even though daddy had to preach the next day, even though daddy had other responsibilities, he cared enough. If you're going to be the man, the father that God wants to be, you to be. You got to show manhood. You got to make time for your family. Number three, you got to master agape love. You've got a master. One of, as a father myself, I think one of the things that is hardest about being a father is sometimes your children can frustrate you so much. <laughs> Anybody here ever been there? <laughs> my daughter has been away at boarding school the last two years, and I told her that they, this ain't going to work. <laughs> I got to call Yale today to see if they got somewhere where you can come and stay right now. Because <laughs> me and you in this house, <laughs> it ain't going to work. <laughs> but what I've learned is no matter what 
your children do. You got to master. Un- I, I, I don't understand people and listen, I don't care what it is. I, I don't care. And, and I'm not saying you agree with them. I'm not saying that you just accept whatever they live and whatever they do. But no matter what happens in their life, you ought to love them unconditionally with a agape love. And when it gets hard for you, you just remember what Christ did for you on the cross. Because the Bible Bible said while we were 1 Corinthians 13 says beareth all things and, 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 and I wish I had a parent who can be honest this morning who can testify I've had to bear some things uh oh see y'all had perfect children alright y'all had perfect children You ain't never had to get a call from the school. I wish I had somebody here. You, you, you ain't never got so mad. You said, if you just don't get out of my presence right now. I remember that I think the one time in my life I thought surely my mother don't love me no more. <laughs> I, I think I must have been about 13 and I had done something crazy and my mother went to hit me and I stuck my hand up. <laughs> yeah. My mother said, oh, you want to hit me now. (laughs) Now, I'm not going to tell you all the words to you. But she said, you stay right there and you better not move. And I was so scared, I was just standing. I couldn't, I I mean, I couldn't move if I wanted to move. My mother, all five foot of herself, she went and got a chair. Because, you know, by the end, I was bigger than she was, and she stood up on that chair, and she had a broom in her hand. <laughs> and she said, let me tell you something. If you ever <laughs> put your hand up, I'm not in, I'm, 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 if you ever put your hand up to me again, i kill you dead. <laughs> At that moment, surely I could not see my mother loving me unconditionally. (laughs) But then I think about all, in spite of all that I've done, she loves me anyhow. Love beareth all things, it believeth all things, it hopeth all things, it endures. That's some stuff even as a father you're going to have to endure, but love never fails. Conditionally, master it. When it gets hard, pray about it. When it gets difficult, put it in the Lord's hands. But love them unconditionally. If we're going to be the fathers God wants us to be. We've got to show manhood. We've got to make time for our families. We've got to master agape love. The fourth thing is maturity is a must. You gotta mature, you gotta, you even as a father, you must continue to grow. Your children must see you maturing in the Lord. That's why 1 Corinthians 13 goes on to say, when I was a child, I speak as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. See, our problem is we want our children to think we're perfect and ain't none of us perfect. Perfection 
is not your aim. Maturity is your aim. Somebody missed that. Perfection is not your aim because if you're trying to shoot for perfection, you're never going to get there. But if you shoot for maturity and say, listen, I just want to be better today than I was yesterday. I, I want to be better this year than I was last year. That's what your children need to see. They need to see you growing up in the law. They need to see a man who's serious about getting better. Who's serious about making better decisions who's serious about following closely after God, maturing to get to a place. And, and you see, your children, see, nobody respects hypocrites. So we got to be honest and let our children know, listen, Mama ain't perfect. Daddy ain't perfect. We all sin and fall short of the glory of God. But the good news is we have a God who's able to forgive us. And even though I made a mistake this time, the good news is God has given me, I wish I had a witness here, God has given me another chance. God has given me another chance. That's why I tell folk, listen, I don't care where you are right now, even as a father, you may have missed the mark up until this moment, but thank God you still got breath in your body. Father was here last Sunday. You know, that was a time I couldn't sit uncomfortably. I couldn't sit comfortably in the same place as him. But the good news is we all are growing in the law. Amen, Amen somebody. And, and thank God for forgiveness and thank God for maturity that I've allowed and now I'm just at peace with myself and it's called growth. It's called growing and all of us ought to be doing it. All of us have some areas in our lives that we need to mature in. All of us have some areas that we can be better in. You want to be who God, and this is not just for fathers, this is all of us. If you want to be who God wants you to be, you've got to make up in your mind that, like Paul said, I press on toward the mark. I, I'm trying to get there. I, I have not obtained it yet. I have not got to where God wants me to get, but you know what? I'm and, and, and when you make a mistake and you mess up, you just tell them, I'm pressing anyhow. I, I'm pressing on. I, I, I know I'm trying to get somewhere. I'm not content with staying where I am. Because if I'm going to be the father, the husband, the man, the brother, the sister, I'm going to keep on pressing. If you're going to be the father that God wants you to be, manhood must be exhibited. Make time for your family. Master agape love. Maturity is a must. But the last thing is you've got to manifest wisdom. I like that word manifest. That word manifest means clear or obvious to the eye or mind. It is a display or show by one's acts or appearance. They got to see wisdom in your life wisdom the bible says in proverbs 1 and 7 the fear of the lord is the beginning of knowledge but fools despise wisdom and instruction you've got to show wisdom it can't be all in your mind it can't be an abstract but there has to be some evidence that you are displaying wisdom in your life you got to show it to your children, your family, on your job, in your community, in your spiritual life. 
it ought to be saturated with wisdom. What does that mean? Since the, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, they ought to see you as a man. You know, we see going back to that first point, manhood. See, it's manly to praise the law. See, I knew it was going to get quiet right there. The wife said, let everything. It didn't say let women. It didn't say let everybody but men. It said let everything that had the breath. If you've got breath. If you've got breath in your body, you ought to be able to give God some praise. You ought to be able to worship God. They ought to see you read your word. They ought to see you as a man pray. They ought to see you as a man trust in the Lord with all your Hard, lean not on your own understanding and all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path. They, they ought to see you understanding that I'm, I'm not the man I am because of the money. I ain't all about my money and my cars and my clothes, but I am the man that I am because I've been washed in the blood of the lamb and I can do nothing. Without Jesus Christ. I said before. That my grandfather was a faulty man. He made some major mistakes in his life. But the one thing. That I carried that I knew about him. Was that he loved Jesus. I wish I had somebody here. That he loved Jesus Christ. And that he accepted him as his Lord and Savior. And when I saw him, I didn't see his mistakes. I didn't see his mess ups. But I saw the Jesus in him. I would sit there on that front row at the Lily Grove Church as a little boy and my grandfather who was chairman of deacons would sit on that front seat and I could still hear him today. Lining, guide me, oh, thy great Jehovah. And after he would line that hymn, he would get down on his knees. And, and it was like he was talking to God. And even though he was a man just like David who made mistakes. A man like Moses who even though God called him and told him to lead the people because of hidden mistakes, God said, you'll see it, but you won't get in. Just, just like Peter, who was one of his closest friends, uh, but at the fire, he cussed and denied that he even knew him. But on those Sunday mornings, I would see the wisdom in my grandfather going down on his knees and talking to the Lord. And, and that's the wisdom that you ought to manifest in your life. That's the wisdom that your children ought to see. Yeah, yeah, teach them about business. Yeah, make sure they get educated. Yeah, make sure that they know this and they know that. But oh, the greatest thing that you could ever give them is a knowledge of Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Marvin Gaye as what's going on. Moses, in a real sense, asked what's going on. Even today, I'm sure there are those when we think about fatherhood who are asking what's going on. What's going on? God is looking for some men who will be the fathers that they have called to be. And when they stand up and become who they're supposed to be, Moses says he'll carry you like a father carries his children. And imagine a generation will be changed when fathers become who God called them to be. We pray.
pray that you've been blessed by today's message. Please join us again next week for another powerful word from God. For prayer requests or to order a copy of today's program, write to us at Mount Pleasant Baptist Church, 2516 Squirrel Hill Road in Herndon, Virginia, 20171. That's Mount Pleasant Baptist Church, 2516 Squirrel Hill Road in Herndon, Virginia, 20171. You can also visit us on the web at www.mountpleasantbaptist.org. When ordering, please be sure to include the message number. Until we meet again, remember, God's Word, our mission field.